Thanks so much for staying with us. We want to thank our sponsors for sponsoring the show today. Without our sponsors, we would definitely not be able to have the show. So thank you so much. So just to remind everyone what's going on, don't forget, we have Farmer's Market today. I will be downtown as soon as we finish up here. Also, the Alliance Farmer's Market is going on. Don't forget your other local farmer's markets on Wednesdays and Thursday evenings. So don't forget also, next Saturday morning, we will be doing the yoga class, uh, uh, the 28th. 9 a.m., 20% off to all of the participants. It is a $15 fee to participate in the yoga class or two for $25. So grab a friend and save some money. Also, at the end of the yoga class, we will be having tea and hard-boiled eggs. We need that source of protein to, uh, you know, get you all back into having the energy that you need after an extremely... No, not extremely hard yoga class. This is an all-level yoga class. Everyone is welcome. Uh, Miranda will throw in a little bit more intensity uh, for the ones that want to, but uh, she says that it is a beginner yoga class and will go all the way through to extreme. And it is up uh, good for children um, from 10 years old and up. If you are a newbie and you don't even have a mat, um, we have extra mats for you to use. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Don't forget, think about what you might be needing at the Garden Center um, because 20% off um, next Saturday for all of the uh, yoga participants. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So we answered a couple questions earlier in the show about the pepper issues, disease issues, um, and garlic harvesting. But we're going to talk um, now about a question that we've had. Um, and a lot of people have this question um, and this issue um, for several different reasons. And we're going to talk about both of them is flowers on our fruits and vegetables and then no fruit or vegetable producing from that flower. And I um, wish this was a a call-in show that we could have the question, people guessing the questions answer right now would be a lot of fun. That's not the way we do this. Um, but does anybody know, think about why you would have flour and then not get um, a harvest or a fruit or a vegetable from it? Um, and I'm of course, I'm going to give you the answer. Um, it's because of no pollinators. And so this could happen for a couple different reasons. First off, um, if your area does not have a lot of bees um, because of maybe um, spraying of pesticides or herbicides, and so there aren't any bees in the area to pollinate your plants, therefore you can have a beautiful flower. If it's not pollinated, you're not going to get um, let's say, for instance, eggplant, a beautiful purple flower, but if you don't have a pollinator pollinating them, you will never get an eggplant. And the same is going to be with your squash and your cucumbers, your tomatoes and your peppers. Um, also, if you do have a fruit tree, usually it is big enough by itself to pull pollinators into it. But that's why, you know, some people that say, oh, I, I planted one zucchini plant and I didn't get anything because if you don't have other pollinators around attracting the bees to it, that one zucchini plant might not be enough and therefore you won't get a good harvest. So the more plants you have, the better your pollination is going to be because the more bees you're going to attract. A lot of people ask me the question about, well, can I get fruit from one fruit tree? And yes, you can get fruit from one fruit tree if it's a self-pollinating variety that you don't need additional um, trees in the area to pollinate. And But you can technically get it if you have the bees to pollinate the tree. If you don't, then no, you won't. So that is very, very important. So what you want to do is uh, get those pollinators. Now, some people, you know, think, ahead and they get the pollinators, um, they might even have a beehive. And in the situation that I'm talking about is Jolie Fichter, um, which many of you know because of the farmer's markets. She um, has hives on her property. She has a beekeeper that comes and takes care of them. But she had planted lots and lots of pollinating flowers close to their hives so that they would have a lot to eat so they will produce a lot of honey. In her case, it was sort of um, having a reverse effect than she wanted because the bees loved the things that were planted in the pollinating flower field next to the hive so much that they weren't coming down to the garden. 
to pollinate her eggplant and her cucumber plants. So you want to make sure that um, they are wanting to come to your stuff and you didn't plant too much close to them um, so that they don't want to come to your things. They have enough right around there. Um, So they will travel for a mile if there's not enough close, but they're, you know, just like us, um, if they don't have to go far to get the things that they need, they're not going to go far. They're going to, um, you know, eat off of what is close. So actually, in Jolie's case, she has a a wonderful beekeeper, and he has small hives that he can transport very easily. And so he's going to bring in an additional hive and set it right amongst her gardens so that there will be bees there to pollinate the things in the garden. So that is might be something that you want to think about is getting involved with an with a beekeeper so that they will be able to come and put a beehive close to your garden and that will really help attract but you have to make sure that you work with them and have other pollinators and things into the fall and that bloom real early spring so that the bees have something to eat off of early and late so maybe planting some solidago um, which some of you call goldenrod um, in the in your landscape so that you will have that for them to eat off of in the fall And make sure that you have some bulbs planted so that they have something to eat off of in the spring. Or maybe some very early blooming flowers like the forsythia. Something that's going to bloom very early in the spring for them so that they have something to eat off of. Or letting some things go to seed so that they have more things to attract them. So those are going to be ways that you can get those bees to come to you. Remember, the more bees we have, the better we are because that's how all of our food is pollinated all of our fruits and vegetables are pollinated that way and some people say oh well I don't I don't eat fruits and vegetables I only eat meat well if you only eat meat that cow had to eat something so therefore we need bees you will not eat if we don't have bees so bees are very very important and you want to make sure that you have them and that we supply them with everything um, that we need. So that's going to be very, very, very important um, that we do save our bees. Now, if you um, are interested in having a beehive or you would um, like to talk to a beekeeper, you can always call um, or email the Stark County Bee Association and they have a wonderful active group. And if you want to wait until the fair, um, at the end of the Grange Horticulture Building, The Star County Beekeepers Association has a little building right there at the end of our Grange building, and they are in there um, all the hours that the fair is open, um, every day of the fair, and they have people in there that that you can get in contact with. Um, if you want to have a hive or if you're just interested in learning or if you want to become a beekeeper yourself, they have all the information in there that you're going to need to take the classes that you need so that you can be a successful beekeeper. They have um, places um, where you can get the products that you need, um, all of the equipment that you need. So um, the Stark County Bee Association has a, a fabulous group of people um, and they are very, very helpful. They work together so well. So you want to make sure that um, you have the pollinators and and you know how to take care of them. And the Beekeepers um, Association is going to be able to help you do that. So you want to make sure that you, you get a hold of them. So if you have questions that you would like to have answered, just like we've answered these questions, don't forget to give us a call at 330-455-5997 or email me at Cindy Petiti, that's C-I-N-D-Y-P-E-T-I-T-T-I at gmail.com or better yet, stop out at the store at 5828 Columbus Road, um, Louisville address 44641, right on the corner of Columbus Road and Broadway in Nimishillen Township. So um, we've been there, we've been there for 15 years. The Garden Center has been there for, uh, well, the first greenhouse went up in 1932, thanks to the Schmucker family. So we've been there a long time. And if you have questions, we would love you to stop in and let us help you answer those. We also have a great stock of landscape and uh, perennial plants. Um, So if you um, are doing some re-landscaping, we would love to help you out. So that tells us, uh, brings us to another question that we're asked, you know, is it okay to plant in the summertime? And yes, if you can water, it's fine to plant in the summertime. 
You would just want to make sure that you're going to be home to water and that you get some tips from a local independent garden center that can give you tips on how to take care, how to plant first of all, and and then how to take care of those plants in a heated situation when they are freshly planted. Um, This isn't the time you want to do your transplanting, but it is quite okay to go ahead and do some planting. Um, Just make sure that you're not leaving on a two-week vacation um, and you're wanting the the teenager down the street to do the watering for you. You want to make sure that you're going to be there diligently taking care of your plants and you shouldn't have any problem uh, having some nice plants growing in the in the middle of the summertime. Um, it's really not going to stress them out too much. It might stress you out more than them um, in the heat while you're planting them. But do it in the evening. Um, it's going to be easier on you and the plants if you uh, plant in the evening when it's cooler or real early in the morning. Um, but And just make sure that you keep them watered good. Remember to get your pollinators planted, planting them amongst your landscape, and even planting some of your edibles in your landscaping um, is going to be a lot of fun. Blueberry plants are great in the landscape. Um, Raspberries can even be good in the landscape. Strawberries are great ground cover. Um, So it's going to be a lot of fun to do that and have those edibles in your landscape all at the same time. It's like having your garden in your landscape and it's going to be a lot of fun. So remember, um, all the farmer's markets going on um, today. I will be at the Canton Farmer's Market as soon as we finish up here. I'll be down there to answer all of your questions. So come down and see me. I'll be there until um, 1130 today. And then don't forget about the yoga class next Saturday morning at 9 a.m. And um, we are open Monday through Friday at the Greenhouse from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. Saturdays, 8 a.m. till 4 p.m. We are closed on Sunday till the end of September. Um, And... um, We hope that you have a wonderful, blessed week. We want to let you know we will be back here right here at 8 o'clock next Saturday morning getting ready for that yoga class, but I'll be here at 8 a.m. to answer your gardening questions and uh, give you some tips on organic gardening. We'll be right back here at 8 a.m. 95.9 The Light. Thanks so much and have a blessed week.